morning. We thank you for a new day, one like we have never seen before. God, we thank you because we are here in the land of the living. We thank you because we woke up able to do the things that we needed to do, and we woke up knowing who we were and where we were, and we are grateful because many did not have that testimony. Many did not make it, but God, we thank you that you are still giving us the victory. You are still keeping us. You are still making a way for us. You are still helping us to get from here to there with no hurt, harm, or danger. You are being the God of our salvation, and we thank you because not everyone is okay, but God, we thank you because you have kept this house, and you have kept this people, and you have kept our families, and you have kept our friends, and God, we thank you. Even in the midst of things that are going on in our lives, God, we thank you because you give us strength, you give us hope, and you give us the joy that we need to survive. We thank you because we know that without you, we could do and we would be nothing, but because of you, God, we are more than enough, and we have everything that we need to do what we need to do. God, we pray today that as we gather here in this house and on Zoom and online and wherever we are, God, we pray that your power and your anointing would be with us. We pray that you would give us new life, new hope, new strength, and new joy. God, we pray that you would do something for us today, that you would meet us at the point of our need. God, we pray that even the secret things that we have come to you about and the things that we are carrying and things that we may be dealing with in our own houses and in our own lives. God, we pray today that you would send breakthrough for us. We pray that you would shine a light on our situation. We pray that you would push the enemy back so that we can take the next step. We pray, God, that you would meet us and deliver us with your mighty hand. We know, God, that you are able to do any and everything that we need to be done in our lives. So we're calling on you today to be the God of our salvation. We're calling on you to be our joy giver. We're calling on you today to be our help and be our strength. God, we know that you can do it. We are putting our faith and our hope and our trust in you, God. We are returning to the one and to the place where it all happens. We are coming back to you, God. We are laying at your feet. We are getting your bosom. We are resting under the shadow of your wing. God, we are coming to a place of safety, of assurance, of security. God, we are resting in the one who holds this whole world in his hands. God, we pray that you would send peace and that you would send strength to our nation. God, we pray that our leaders would find the answer that they need to restore us to the place where we need to be. God, we pray that pastors and evangelists and preachers all over the world would find new strength to come together, that we would find the power to tear down strongholds. God, we pray that you would give us what we need to do what we need to do, not only in the nation, but in our communities and in our homes, in our families. God, we pray that you would restore our substance today. We have emptied out our cup, and we are available to you, God. We are praying for fresh anointing, for fresh wind, for fresh strength. God, we pray that you would renew us and that you would restore us and God, that you would help us to do all and be all that you have called us to be. God, we pray that you would be with us today. Look on those that are on their way. Bring them safely. Those that are not joining with us in person today but are elsewhere. God, we pray that you would be with us all, that we would all feel a unified sense of power and strength and togetherness today. God, look on this service. Be with us. Be with our pastors. Be with every leader, with every family that's here today. God, we pray that we would all walk away with something that we can use, that we would get an answer, that we would get understanding, that we would find the strength to take that next step. God, we pray that today you would do yet another new thing in us. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you.
Bible says, from the rising of the sun, the setting of the sun, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So we want to be praised this morning.
that's in the town that still punishes my soul. So while he's fighting battle, he can still heal me. While he's fighting battles, he can still tell me I'm worth the fight. While he's fighting battles, he can still lift me out of depression. While he's fighting battles, he can help me walk through anxious moments without having to lose my breath. Because he has the peace that surpasses all understanding. So this morning we lift our strong tower. Come on, one more time. Can you just give him an audible sound of praise? Can you just do something in this atmosphere? You're wonderful, you're redeeming, you're strong, you're healing, you're saving, you're redeeming. We thank you for your love and for your power.
tangible by, uh, by bills, dollars, checks, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Where is your sting? 
Bring the word to our Bless the other God who always causes us, oh, causes us to triumph in death. Amen. And the Mother's and Women's Day service will be made.
So, oh, wait a minute. So, prayer tomorrow, 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. It's got me down here for the first person. I'm <laughs> praying at 6 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> we had prayer yesterday at 12 noon. Amen. And it was God did what he promised to do. Amen. So I'm asking <clears throat> that on prayer at 6 a.m., if you would hear God, there were three things that the Lord had given to me to pray for specifically. Tomorrow was preparation then obedience. I'm saying this for the people who's coming next. Then obedience and then direction. So those were the three things that the Lord had given. So please govern yourselves accordingly. Those of you who are praying at 6 a.m., these are the things that we're going to be uh, praying around. Amen. Amen. Now, the next voice. Woo! Because I know this is teaching Sunday, but I came to get something from the Lord today. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but there is an expectation yes. that God is going to speak to us. Yes. And today, because it's teaching Sunday, today we can speak back to Him. Hello, somebody. Amen. 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 So receive our pastor this time. Get into the 
get in a position of momentum. Get into a position of momentum. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about, amen, in a position of momentum. Amen. Momentum, momentum, momentum. I am concerned, amen, about us as a people. Amen. I'm concerned about our church because we say we want momentum, but we don't understand what momentum really means. Amen. We don't understand, amen, what it really requires, amen, to be in flow. Amen. Now, we don't have a problem being spiritual. We have a problem speaking in tongues. But you can't have momentum when God says go this way and you take a break and go that way. That's not momentum. Amen. Now, but now they were in all in one room at one time, and they were all with one accord. Amen. So, what is momentum? Momentum basically is being on the move. I'm just going to talk. Amen. Pray. It's about action. See, we have to get past talk and get to the place of action. Amen. Amen. If y'all help me, I might not go as hard. <laughs> it's about motion. So traditionally, momentum is the amount of motion occurring in something that is moving. Or the force that drives, listen, the force that drives something toward forward to keep it moving. It's the force, Mother Lena, behind something. Sometimes I feel the momentum, I feel the push of God. Mother Lena. Yes, God. Amen. Sometimes I feel the push. Sometimes I feel the weight. Yes. Hallelujah. And often when I feel the weight, it means God is settling my spirit. Something's getting ready to happen. And sometimes I feel the push. How many of you have ever felt the push? Oh, yes. And there's two things you can do with the push. Come on. You can put your brakes on, or you can follow the momentum. Woo! Good God Almighty. And I would push the uh, challenge some of you that some of you put the brakes on and you self-sabotage when you feel the push. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? I'm not in my notes yet. Because there are places that you should be that you're not now. That had you been in the flow and the momentum, you would have been there already. All right. So I'm going to teach. So an item standing still has no momentum. No, it doesn't. That means it has no motion, it has no movement. Hence the frustration of many people because they feel as though, thank you, Holy Ghost, they feel as though their life is not going anywhere because they're not in the flow. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, King. Amen. Thank you, King. <laughs> King will help me. I'm just talking today. Because maybe some of us are challenged in our spiritual lives, our career lives, because we when the door was open, we didn't walk in. Mm -hmm. And so we keep searching for other doors. Right. Another push. Mm. Another move. Right. Good Lord Almighty. But since 1979, I've been in the same momentum. Wow. I didn't get that. <laughs> so if we are in the flow and the Spirit of God is driving and directing you, there should be momentum. Mm. Right. Just keep swimming. The child of God should never be stagnant. Right. <laughs> God is, listen, God is moving. Yeah. By his spirit, moving yeah. Yeah. Dr. Gray throughout all the world. Yeah. Signs and wonders, it is moving. Move what? Oh God in me. Mm -hmm. So why would the child of God just be stagnant? Mm -hmm. Not going anywhere, not doing anything when I'm praying, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Prophet. That's cute. Mm -hmm. That don't mean you move. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can talk to you today. That's right. That don't mean you move. Maybe some of y'all are bored because you're not doing nothing. Correct. Mm -hmm. Not doing anything. Life is standing still. All right, let me. Momentum is movement. It's action. It's motion. Right. Momentum is only for those that are in action. If you're not moving, there is no momentum. Yeah, I ain't got enough before you. So I don't listen. I don't know what else you want to ask. They said, "Mother, I don't have nothing. If you nothing from nothing means nothing. And if you want to sit in a place of nothingness, I got nothing for you. I can encourage you, but I don't have nothing for you. 
And listen, here's the deal. If God can't encourage you, I want to know what the pastor and the prophet and the preacher and teacher can do. Amen. If God who speaks to you Correct. cannot move you, Correct. what do you expect the pastor? Mm. Right there. Mm. So momentum is only for those that are winning in life. Mm. Mm. So you gotta win to gain momentum. That's the day to play basketball. Amen. Any other people play sports? And then a losing team, good God of mine, that's heard. A losing team has to learn how to win. Then when you win, they talk about momentum. Mm -hmm. Woo! Good. Yeah, Pastor, that's good. How <laughs> much some momentum? First, you need to learn how to win. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. My God. Gotta learn how to win. Mm -hmm. Amen. I like this wall back here. The Holy of my Sinai. Momentum is for those people that are working, that are trying to achieve something. If you're not doing anything, we first got to get you to move. Yes. Maybe those are people, there are people that feel left out because they're not really doing anything. All right. So when we talk about all oh, the ministry needs to get momentum, how can the ministry have momentum if everybody is not moving? Right. If everybody's not in their place, a car cannot move and gain momentum if every part of the car is not in the right place. Right. Operating in sync and moving together, you cannot get momentum. Holding us back. Concerns me that people believe that momentum of it is an event. I'm going to go to church and get me some momentum. That makes sense. I'm going to go to church and get some momentum. Let me say it differently. I'm going to go to, I'm going to, go to church and get touch. And you think that's going to push you and move you forward. That's the problem in the house of God. We often think, I'm coming. See, that's event living. You live from Sunday. See, living from Sunday to Sunday doesn't give you momentum. Right. I took my class in Stefan. I took my class in Stefan. Yes. I'm going to say that again. We, Many of us are living from Sunday to Sunday. Right. And what about what happens between Monday and Saturday? You have these highs and lows. See, momentum and momentum, there's really no highs and lows. No. It's just straight up. That's right. That's right. Steady flow. Come on, mother. Yes. Don't help me, mother. Yes. Yeah, mother, yes. mother. Mother, it's a steady flow when I have momentum. Yeah. Karen, I have momentum. That's why sometimes we have to pray so hard and fight so hard. But tell you why, because when a when a body is at rest, it takes a lot of energy yeah. to move that body. But if you're already in the flow, right. Holy Ghost, mother, if you're already in the flow, it only can take a whisper of God. Come through. Come on, come on, come on. It only takes a whisper. The Bible says the Spirit of God listen. It just it won't take much for you to move with the flow. But if you're in rest, take a whole lot. King said that <laughs> We come to church, Mother Lena, for events. We come for a touch. Amen. We come for a touch. The Pastor Dana is the vehicle that I believe is for my touch, and she don't come. I need a church without an event for a touch. Wow. That's good. How can you tell? You can tell because when Pastor Dana gets up, everybody goes, ah, yeah. But if everybody else says, praise the Lord, we like, so what y'all doing is waiting for the event of Pastor Dana. Oh, mm. no, please don't. Yes. Lord, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord's not going to this. Is. You're needed in the kingdom. But I'm not trying to help. I'm just going to talk. Because I want y'all to understand that when you flow, we're not, if the pastor's not here, there should still be momentum. There should be. There still, listen, if the musician doesn't come, there still should be. All right. So we want these things called pivotal experiences. When I come to church, I want to receive something from the Lord. And if God doesn't give me what I want, it wasn't pivotal. Like you can go to the bank and put coins in the machine and tell God what you want. Y'all don't, don't never listen. She Amen. Mother Lena, I'm going to help them out. 
you put the coin in the little machine that said exact change, and then you go and say, well, I want this today. And so you push this button, you pull a little lever, right, Mother Lita, you don't know nothing about it. You put a little lever, you have to scoot down. You have to scoot down, right, Mother Lita, you have to scoot down. And then you have to reach down and get your stuff out the... That's how y'all like to do God. I'm going to come to church and today I'm going to plug in when I want to. And I better get what I want from God, otherwise God has let me down. And I'm just going to expose the people. I just got to say, you know. Amen. So if something doesn't happen every single time you come to church or in your life, uh -huh, something spectacular doesn't happen, we feel let down. That's not momentum. That's event. Correct. That's event. And me and David counsel people about getting married. And they're so happy for the wedding ceremony. They have to plan on how to live in their life. Because you're living for the events. But you haven't decided how to live for your life. We're going to have this big party. Dr. Karen spent twenty dollars or $30,000. And then when I get that joke at home, I have, and all of the shine is gone. Mother. Because sometimes in church, there's no shine. There's just love. Well, because sometimes God needs to work on our particulars and not the spectacular things that we want God to do. Uh -huh. So that's called, some of us have fits, F-I-T-S, and starts. Fits, and then we start. I come to Sunday and get a start, and by the middle of the week I have a fit. <laughs>
That's Newton's law. So in the natural, so in the spiritual. So some of y'all want to be deep. Newton really wasn't that deep. Newton just had a glimpse of the, one of the laws. Something at rest stays at rest. Some of y'all been at rest for a long time. You're not going to, nothing going to happen to you. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to move on your behalf because you're at rest. This church is not going to go nowhere. I'm going to say this one more again. We're going to be here forever if y'all don't start moving. I don't know if you're looking at y'all for the next 10 years. I'll be retired, but I'll be looking at y'all for the next 10 years. <laughs> Some of y'all don't get into moment. Get, catch the moment. Tell your neighbor, catch the moment. Catch, 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 catch it. Catch it. Catch it. There's nothing wrong with the promise. Good God, I just heard God say, there's nothing wrong. My belief is nothing wrong with what I promised you. Good God, I'm not. nothing wrong with what I said to you. But your priorities, okay, I'm getting ready to get there. Your priorities are thrown off. Priorities are thrown off. All right. So, it takes more energy to move a person at rest than it does a person in motion. More energy. I'm going to have to pray harder, Cameron. I'm going to have to fast more. I'm going to have to pull on God more because you're not in motion. Mm -hmm. right. mm. An object will not change its motion unless a force acts on it. Mm -hmm. Can I go to your mother? That's why some of y'all have drama in your life. God's trying to get you to move. Mm -hmm. God's trying to take that issue, that drama, that pain, that, that sorrow to propel you into something. But yeah. the problem is you hunker down. Right. Sometimes that thing. Yeah. Listen. I just heard that it was good for me. That's it. That I was a yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That would give me momentum to move. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. Yes. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Oh, yes. So there has to be a force that acts upon you. And the problem is, some of us get caught up in the the negativity of the thing that causes us to be pained or hurt, right. and then we get we sit in that. And we commiserate in that instead of saying, this was for my good. Correct. Mm -hmm. This was for my good. Yes, yes. Maybe it's trying to push me. Excuse yes. me. Maybe it's trying to push me. Yes. Maybe it's trying to propel me into my neck. But we sit and get into analysis paralysis about what God is doing. Right. Baby, God don't have to tell you what he's doing. At all. So if you're sitting around waiting for God to get, give you and Tell you everything that he's going to do and explain everything to you. Listen, learn how to deal with uncertainty in your life. I got to know everything before I can move. You're not in the flood. Correct. I'm just going to help you. You're not in the flood. I have every answer. You'll never move. Look out of my Listen, you'll never flood. Mother, you'll never flood. Sometimes I don't even know what God's going to do till I sit here. Sometimes I don't know what God's going to do till I get here. Well, Pastor, aren't you prepared? Yeah, I do prepare at home. I try to do the best I can. But listen, I'm open to the flood. Some of y'all want your life's program. Listen, listen. A programmed life is not really open to miracles. A programmed life. That means you're in control of it. You're managing it. You want it to go your way. Let it go. But I'm open. To the move and the flow of the Spirit of God that you cannot orchestrate the flow of God. You know, it's not in my notes. I hope I can get oh, remember. Yes, sir. You cannot orchestrate where God wants to go and where God wants to move. Who knows the mind of God? Who knows, Who knows it? I'm going to tell God what I want God to do for me on today. No, baby. You want to orchestrate. You want to, you know, because I want to be sure it's going to turn out the way. That I wanted, but if I was in control of my life, things would have turned out differently. Was was a, a mess. Everything. <laughs> Can I share one thing, Mother Lee? The reason why I, I, I'm doing so good in my life because I've been an object in motion. Mm -hmm. And an object in motion is hard to stop. Yes, See? Say so. I just want to teach. Yes. An object in motion, Karen, is hard. An object in motion. Tell you there, keep moving. An object in motion. Mother Lena, object. So that's when we talk about Stefan. See, y'all? Now, my spouse wants Stefan to push me from here, from zero to a hundred. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but Pastor was an object, not in motion. I'm going to talk about myself so y'all won't be offended. 
The pastor was an object, not an emotion. Now, if I had done it the way my spouse did it, I'd have been twisted up, tore up, and mentally unprepared. <laughs> So the Lord said, someone that knew my personality. The Lord said, someone that understood my temperament. That speaking tongues to me in a language so that I could understand. The Lord said. And so even though David was telling them, make sure he this, make sure he did this. That's almost like, I know JC. It's not going to work. See, God knows how much you can bear. So what would happen is Stephon would say, Come on, JC. Now, I, I said, I don't want to lift that. Give me the five pound. <laughs> God knows how to get you there, Pastor Dana. God knows how to, I would be, I don't want to take that ring. And then he said, okay, well, we're going to work with the five today. Then he was psyched. Yeah. Sometimes God, come on, mother, so I can get what mother momentum. Yeah. He had this little, then he would say, oh, um, you did 10 of these. Now, of course, he did all, you did 10 of these. So what I'm going to do is I think he said, take this wing. Now I'm supposed to be worried about the weight he gave me. I'm looking at the size of it. He's like, go ahead, you can do it. See, sometimes that's the, the spirit behind you that gets you momentum telling you can do it. But you're so worried about, I got some scripture. I'm going to give it to a pastor day in a minute. There was some weight behind me. I was worried about, what about that weight? He said, don't focus on that weight. I got some new weight I think you can handle. Got some new weight. He said, if you can take five, you can do ten. Didn't that joker, you're not on here. Didn't that joker turn around and say, here, take this one. I'm like, this one's bigger. But if you listen, but if you lift it to 10, you can lift the. Then what he did, he would take the same weight and put it on different machines in my basement. I was at the step like these my dude. I'm like, boy. But listen, I can tell the difference now. Don't hear what I'm saying. I can feel the difference in my body. Because I been, I went from being stable and stuck to having momentum. Good. Don't hear what I'm saying. All right. Anybody got any questions? No questions. Amen. The pastor's just talking. So, so Paul said this to the Galatians. The people of my church. Paul said this to the Galatians. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you? You ran well. You started off good. What hindered you? Paul asked this question to the Galatians. What happened to your momentum? From God Almighty. What happened to you? Was it predicated on a person? A place or a thing? What happened to your momentum? I'm not going to complain about it no more. <laughs> Listen to this. What was the force? What was the force that slowed your progression? Think about this. What got in the way of your running your race that slowed your momentum? I want you to think about it, beloved. Was it the things in life, the people in life, your job? I was talking to my son. That was why I was a little late. I can't tell you what he told me. So I want to dance with him. Good God, I'm not here. I'm Let's dance together. Ooh, I to dance. Okay. That's how I want to fall out. And we were talking about what he wants to do next in life. Yeah. Pastor, come on. Listen, I was like, I just said, ooh, hmm. okay. Because you know you can't tell me, you can't tell us Clayton's not. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's silent. He's silent. He's silent. He's silent. He's silent. And you know how to read the rep. Yeah. So he was talking about something. He said, well, I said, son, sometimes the people want the things, but not the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. We want, we go after the all these things shall be added to us, and it becomes a distraction to the kingdom. Jesus. And then it's not a blessing, it's a curse. Jesus. Because you did it out of order. Jesus. God said, this is a prosperous Jesus. ministry, but we're distracted. Jesus. This church didn't have all the money that it had. I bet you we'd be in there praying and seeking God like nobody's business. Didn't have a fancy car, no degree, not the grave. I bet you we can wear Manolos and Louis Vuitton and all that. I bet you, Mother Lena, we'd be in there seeking the kingdom like it was our last breath. Mm. My God. Mm. Mm. So it's harder to pray and have momentum when you got weight. Mm. Running analogy. The runner is moving, but something.
listen, the runner is moving, but something hinders him. Something hinders him. Amen. Here's some things that I put about. Some of you put on brakes because you're afraid of the momentum and speed. Amen. Some of you put on brakes because you're afraid of the speed of the momentum. Amen. You want to drive the way you want to. Correct. So I'm glad my spouse didn't teach me how to drive. Take them off the brake. <laughs> Push that gas. Push that gas. Thank God I learned how to drive before I was in there. Yeah. Yeah. But that would have made me cut down. Right. Further on the brake. Yeah. I love my spouse. Praise the Lord. So some of you have put on brakes when God said, take your foot off. God's been saying to some of you for a long time, put your foot on the accelerator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to see my glory, you want to see miracles, you want to see what I'm getting ready to do in your lives for your family, put your foot on the accelerator. Get in motion. God, I'm born in this place. Putting a brake on is not going to get you where you want where you want to go. Put your foot on about that. Get it, Lord. It's so good. Put your yes, foot on the Yes. Hallelujah. I'm the paraclete. I'm the one that's walking beside you. I'm in the car. I'm telling you. Uh -huh. Put your foot on. Yeah. The accelerator. Yeah. Some of you are not sure. Yeah. Some of you are sure. But some people aren't sure. So they lose momentum. Some of us get distracted by the stuff on the side of the road, mother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're on the side of the road and we lose momentum and people are going past us. Some of us are not convinced of the value of the race. Mm -hmm. They don't understand why they're in the race. And then some people self-sabotage and crash and burn. Mm -hmm. And then they blame it on the race course. How about it? <laughs> momentum is gained when you see progress. Paul teaches us how to have and maintain momentum. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. <laughs> Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians 3.10, that I might know him mm -hmm. and the power mm -hmm. of his resurrection mm -hmm. and the fellowship. Come on, Dr. Graves. She's doing that old kind of fellowship. <laughs> of his suffering, being made conformable. Mm -hmm. Don't go in there, Dr. Graves. Let me tell you, momentum requires power. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It requires power. Power that I might know him, that I might experience him, and the power of his resurrection. If I am to win, I need to realize that there is some pain and suffering and there needs to be change for there to be momentum. Mm -hmm. so re momentum requires power. Momentum requires going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all want power. You don't want to go nowhere. So why would God give you power? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Mother Lena. Turn it down, turn it down, Lord. You had an event, and then we, then when somebody's sick and they say pray, you don't have the power. <laughs> what was that? Yep. Right. Doctor, I'm gonna talk to Doctor Karen. What was that? You really didn't want to go the way you were saying this. See, your your mouth said one thing, but your heart was far from God. Mm. So I'm, I'm charging y'all today. I'm charging y'all. I'm provoking you today. Yes. Out of this fast, we're going to get a charge. Yes. Mother Lee, we're going to get a charge. God said we're going to get a charge out of this damn fast. But God said, tell the people they got to keep up the momentum. Yes. Otherwise, we'll be in the same place. Holy Ghost, I need. We'll be in the same place. Every fast, every time that we pray, this is power. Every time we pray, it may God begins to do something. And know what we do somehow? We put our foot on the brake and slow down. My God. Been in this church since the beginning. I guess I have to be on the pastor. But for 14 years, I've seen fits and starts. Okay, I've seen fits, Karen. I've seen fits and starts. And God said, no more fits and starts. God is saying, tell the people, take their foot off the brake. My God. And follow the momentum. I heard God say, I got you. Right. Holy Ghost, who caught a body? Yes, yes. Will you not trust me? Yes. I'm going to take you somewhere, but take your foot off. Go with the momentum. We see it. These great moves of God and get it slower. Mm -hmm. That's because some of y'all won't show up. See, when you are critical to the ride, amen, if you're not in the ride, then the ride doesn't go the way it's supposed to go. You're right. Yeah. Not bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, momentum. Let me read Philippians 3 and 12. Mm -hmm. 
not as though I had already attained nothing. Mm -hmm. Either were ready, already perfect. I didn't get there. Also, I didn't get there. I had to go somewhere, Cameron. I got to go. But I follow after that, that I may apprehend for that which also I am apprehended. See, if we have attained or we have the mentality that we have attained, there is no need for movement. Some of y'all think you already there. And then some of y'all afraid to get there. Yeah. They're free. Yeah, they're free. Uh -huh. So let me help you out. I'm going to use my sister. She don't mind. Mm -hmm. Getting a doctor's degree wasn't easy. No. But she found out after she got in it. My Lord. Karen, what happened? There was some momentum. Uh -huh. I heard. Don't I heard. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, listen. After I got my master's degree, I was like, oh, it's been a long time. So was, uh, no, David said, listen, go ahead and finish this undergrad. And what happened is, now I'm going to help you. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the story. I had, a, I had a driver that would take me and pick me up for my master's degree, for my undergrad. Be there, wait for me after work. Uh, Sit in the car and wait for me. Take me home and drive me to Willenborough. <clears throat> then after he saw I had momentum, I think that's what it was. Don't say nothing, David. After he saw that I had momentum, he said, you know what? I think he can get home by himself. <laughs> I don't hear what I'm saying. See, some of y'all don't think you can get home by yourself. You still want the driver to drive you. Mm -hmm. You need that push. Come on. Listen, but he gave me the push for the first two years of the undergrad. And when I had gotten used to it, see? It changed the way. Uh -huh. Luckily, I got used to it. I got used to it. Good God of mine, I got used to doing things on my own. I understood the power that was in me. Well, Pastor, why don't you keep pushing up? Because I want you to get used to the power that's in you. What he, then he, he must have said, then I said, you know what, I think, Karen, I can go for it and get that master's degree. Because I was already in what? Momentum. Right. Let me say this. The other thing is I had less fear. Yes. The king is calling us up hither. Yes. 
he's going to call us, not just individuals. He's calling us to come up hither. Yes. Amen. We want the train to be waited by. Yes. Everybody on the bus with the right seat. Because some of us on the bus, we're not on the right seat on the bus. Right. Yeah. And when you're not on the right seat on the bus, you become the dead weight on the bus. Mm. Amen. So we got to have you, this is how we're doing business. We got to have the right people on the bus. Right like camera and the right people on the right seat on the bus. Right. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all need to be driving the bus part time, but you you're so comfortable being a passenger. Right. So he says, "Come up hither, that thou shalt be put in the lower presence of the prince." Then he says, "Brethren, I count not myself, I'm almost done, to have come, to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, mother, I'm forgetting those things that are behind and I'm reaching forth to those things which are before." Listen, you can't run this race and get more. You never get momentum looking back. Never. I know this is a real simple message. Amen. But you can't, Karen, get momentum. You can't get momentum worrying about what they said about you. Amen. Amen. Well, but I can't, what I was able to do last week or last year. Amen. That's not momentum. That's a look. You don't need momentum to look back. You don't need no power to look back. You don't need no push to look back. Mm -hmm. You don't need that. Listen, the lighter, listen, listen, the lighter you are, the quicker the uptake. The quicker the motion. Momentum is not needed to stay where you are, neither is it needed to look back. Uh -huh. Paul says this, I press. Mm -hmm. Pressing is about momentum. Now, let me tell you about momentum. If, uh, who can I do something with that? Search it. <laughs> I was going to demonstrate it. <laughs> there is no way that Sir Jazz is in standing still and stagnant, I can move Sir Jazz. Science doesn't prove that. It takes an equal force or an equal mass mm -hmm. to be able to push Sir Jazz. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was going to use Lucy, but I thought I'd not Lucy over. <laughs> Y'all could use no, no, no. it. <laughs> But Sir Jazz <laughs> got a little, you know, but, but here's the thing. So if I'm starting from, if Sir Jazz is standing still, I'm going to help you out. Sir Jazz is standing still. And I'm standing still. And I got to knock Sir Jazz down. It's going to take a whole lot of energy. No God am I that hate you. Come in. That's why I like the churches front row people. But if Sir Jazz is standing, and I'm in motion, I don't want to see you Tired. You're not committed to your deliverance. 
These are you deliver, committed to breaking down this wall. If you wanted me to do one on the first one, there's some things I need. I need some, you to get some momentum. Mm -hmm. Now, probably in the scripture, Paul talked about there were some things that he had to lose mm -hmm. before he could run. How about that? Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's some things. He said, I counted all things lost. My pedigree, my family. And if we had more time, I was going to have you all write down what was important to you all on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Write it down on a piece of paper what was important to you. And then I would say, are you willing to lose all of that that was important ah, on that piece of paper so that you might win the excellency and my win God, Jesus. Christ? My God. That's the real lesson that God is saying. Are we willing as a ministry to look at the list of things that are important and say, guess what, God, I'm going to let you take care of that, but I'm going to focus in on winning. That's it. Because winning takes momentum. Winning doesn't take fits and starts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between us and the ministry around the corner that's doing stuff? Because they don't do fits and starts. They keep moving. Even if you, even, good God Almighty, if you stumble, then get up and keep running. Yeah. Well, why did I fall? Why are you in the race, baby? You don't have time to think about why you fell. That's a post-race uh, reflection. Correct. Karen, mm -hmm. we don't stop the business because we make a mistake. We keep doing the business. For real. And then we do after-action thinking. Yes, yes. Y'all doing your action, action, after-action thinking at the wrong time. Yeah. I'm going to think about it while I'm on the racetrack and see what's going to happen. And the whole thing is passing me by. Keep running. Yeah. And then when God gives you rest, a little rest, but then you do your after action thing. Yes. I want our ministry to have momentum. Mm -hmm. I want it to be that. I want us to move. I don't want us to have fits and starts. Right. Amen. I want people that are going to take this ministry to the next level. Right. Right. But it can't be with people that have fits and starts. Yeah. It's got to be with people that know how to follow through. Stop saying what you're going to do and do something. Yeah. Now, let me tell you, everything we need is in the house, but everything in the house ain't yielded. The other activity was to get a hymn, have your list, look at your list. Everybody get the piece of paper. I'm going to teach. I'm gonna write down all the things that are important in my life. My family, my children, my job, my business, my car, my reputation. And then I'm going to say, go look at the hymn. All to Jesus, I surrender. Yeah. And see how many y'all keep saying it when you look at that list. My God. How about it? How about it? Because it's easy to sing the song when you don't look at the list of what's important to you. Right? All to Him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence. What freely live? I surrender. Oh, surrender. my husband's on the list. I don't stop saying it. We're not really ready. See, some of us not really ready for the next thing in God. Ooh. I just saw that box. <laughs> so you really not, because that's not that's on your list of what your priorities are, and that, that's important to you. But when you say all to Jesus, see, that's why some of us should not sing songs mm -hmm. when we don't know the meaning of the song and what is required of the song. Preaching. That's it. Required. Yes. How many of you are committed to momentum? Mm -hmm. yes. Mother, I'm committed to momentum. Mm -hmm. Nothing can stop me. Mother, nothing. Mm -hmm. Karen, nothing. I've had the sweet smell of success. Mother, I know I can win. I, I'm, can I really, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop so the trustees get ready. I know I can win. Pastor Ben, I know I can win. There's two reasons why I know I can win. Because the enemy keeps trying to stop me, number one. And number two, I won before. So I know. Yes. Don't have more children, don't do it. I know, Carl, I know I can. Mm. Yes. The enemy would be beating me. Ooh, beating me and try to beat me down and try to kill me and destroy me if he didn't think. I, oh my God, I thought that in my spirit. And the enemy said, I know. See, y'all can win. Y'all, some of y'all really can win. And I'm gonna tell you, the enemy fights you hard when the enemy knows you can win. The enemy don't stop nobody that's gonna lose. Why would I put my energy in stopping the loser?
stop the race when, when you knock the hurdle down. You get up. Holy Ghost. See, the enemy knows somebody in this room is going to win. The enemy knows you're going to win. Listen, I'll tell you, baby, you're going to win. You're going to win. But do you believe you're going to win? You're going to win. But do you believe you're going to win? The enemy knows. Listen, the enemy knows this church is going to win. But what we can do is put our foot on the brake. Right, Mother Lee, we can't do that. Some of us are going to pray, amen, that some of y'all take your foot off the brake and your gifts and your anointing and your calling, amen. And we're going to pray that you don't self-sabotage and crash and burn. So the enemy knows the enemy won't fight you. The enemy's not going to fight you. See, Pastor David, the enemy fights what we want. Mm -hmm. the pa fights the pastors in our minds. See, the fight battle goes on in your head. That's it. Amen. For some of y'all, it's in your body. Of course, some of the pastors that's in their head. Let me tell you why. For the pastors, is a challenge for leaders because the enemy gets into the strategic realm. Amen. The enemy gets into the strategic realm, gets in your head so you can't think about the things that God, and you can't execute on the things. The enemy will always try to stop winners. I want y'all to think about that. I'm getting ready to go to the trustees in there. The enemy, the enemy tries to court you. Winners. If you're a loser, why would he waste his energy? The, the enemy got limited. Let me help y'all out about the enemy. It's the devil. The devil has limited energy. Yes, Woo! Yes, Look at the off. The enemy is not omnipotent. No. Good God Almighty. We give him that power. Good God Almighty. The enemy has limited power. What are you talking about? God, I want to get Joe. No, you can't. You can do this, that, and the other. But this part of Joe, because Joe is a winner. Uh -huh. God is taking a gamble on some of y'all. Oh, I knew that's right. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Don't be distracted. You won't win. Mm -hmm. Amen. God, you won before. And the trick of the enemy is to make you think that you can't win when you've already won. You already won. Mother Lee, you already won. I don't think I can make it. See, let's, I, I beat the enemy. See, I beat the enemy past the Mother Lee. I beat the enemy. I beat the enemy. I beat them. You can't make it clean. You're not going to be successful. I said, but I beat well, and as long as I'm here, I'm successful. God is for me. I'm here. Uh -huh. Ooh. That's it. God is for me. So I'm in momentum. I'm following through. And I'm waiting on the promises. Stop waiting and get in. Stop waiting. Stop waiting, church. Stop waiting. I'm waiting. I, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Sometimes, listen, some people got healed as they go. Sometimes your blessing comes as you go. You don't hear what I'm saying. I'm waiting for everything to be packed up all nice and pretty yeah. and all this kind of stuff. Listen, some, and sometimes God will give you the resources as you go. Some of y'all don't have resources because you ain't go nowhere. Right. How are people going to bless you when they don't know what they're signing into? Mm. I'm going to invest in something. I'm not investing on something. I don't know what it is. Tell me what it is. What have you what? Done. When you go to the bank, you go with your proposal. Shark Tank, how much money have you won? How much have you won before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, son. I'm going to help you elevate but you, but your investment. But some, you have to have some skin in the game. You got to do something. You got that, Church, we got to do something. So much anointing in this room. So much power in this room. So much wisdom in this room. But something stops our momentum. And I come against it. I come against it. The slugger, I come against it. Read that. Read about the slugger. But have you considered the ants? She's yes. small. She read that in Proverbs. I think it's in Proverbs. Consider the ant. Yes, sir. That's what she does. She go out and pick up some 15 times a week, takes it and puts it in store. Yes. In off seasons. Yes. Something stops us from having momentum. Yep. Is it our priorities? Are we doing the wrong thing? Are we doing busy work? Mm -hmm. And things that really don't matter, things that really don't count. Some of you do busy work so you really don't have to do God's work. There's some people that sin, so they don't have to obey God. Because they're afraid of what God's really going to do. I'm trying to help the people, son. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to get the objectified, use my body any old kind of way. Because the saints said I'm going to be prophetic. And I'm afraid of being prophetic. So I'm just going to count myself out. I'm going to self-sabotage. And not, and not be, you know. I'm going to self-sabotage. Huh? It doesn't work. <laughs> How do you know pastor don't work? The pastor standing here in front of you. Say, don't worry. You try to self-sabotage. Try not taking that test, John. And just say, you want me to get this or get that? Now you choose. I choose. I'm going to pass this test. <laughs> All right. So listen, saints. 
just to say, Pastor David is a preacher in your family. Yes. Amen. It's a preacher in your family. There's a legacy of word uh, yes. in your family. Yes. Amen. Uh, Amen. 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 There's, a, there's a legacy of word. Amen. 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 Your vision's going to come to pass. Like when I talk to Pastor David, Amen. 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 But the enemy knows they can win. Mm -hmm. That's why the enemy fights. I'm just going to, then I'm going to turn to you. Trustees, give me two more minutes. That's why this morning I was like, hmm, that happened to me. And the wise thing is that we sometimes, as parents, as parents, don't provoke your kids to do what you do. Let God Holy operate Lord, and repeat Let God. Let God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There's some things happening right now in my family. Amen. It's, but Dad, I don't want to know. Can you come and teach me a class? I want to be on, we could be on Zoom and talk. An hour a week to learn something. And I was like, what? If I had to say, you need to learn the scripture and learn the word, he'd have been like, I'm going to go smoke and stop. <laughs> then he had the nerve to say, well, I ain't a preacher. I just don't. I said, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I always say, hear the Lord said unto me, <laughs> you are a preacher. I said, oh. I said, well, you know, the people are coming. Like, the people are coming to me and telling me this. Yeah. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That time they got to get my mouth shut. That's when you get this word. I hear that. I'm like, say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, Pastor David, don't worry about it. Amen. Let them do whatever they think they do. It just won't work. Yeah. It's just not parents. It's just not going to work. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. She has been covered in word and prayer. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to work. Let them think it's working. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because, you know, some of us thought we was doing what we were doing. We sure did. Look at you now, honey. I'm going to do whatever I want to do, however I want to do it. All right, let's go. Trust each other. So listen, have momentum in your life. Amen. Amen. You get rewarded for momentum. You don't get rewarded for standing still. Amen. Amen. And I just wanted to share that with you all. And Peyton, you are a beautiful baby. Mm -hmm. Every time I turn around, she looks like she's 10 years old. <laughs> she's such a distraction. <laughs> Amen. So I bless the Lord. Amen. Trust these are going to come. They're going to share with us. But amen. Somebody say thank God. Thank God. Thank, you. Say, thank the Lord. Have momentum. Amen. I just wanted to teach you. I didn't preach today. Amen. Praise the Lord. I did good. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I want to have momentum. So we're going to listen to the trustees. They're coming in this short meeting. Hallelujah. How many of you want to have your next in God? Come on, y'all. You want to have your next in God? Listen, you got to move then. You got to move. Amen. What does Kyle say? Do it afraid. Yes. Do it without all of the information. Yes. Oh my God. It's a slow Go ahead. There's a question. I, I was on that momentum right after undergrad. I got stopped. But mm -hmm. I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. And the people that I helped, they got in. And I did. Mm -hmm. He ain't on that road and I got in here and I could preach. See, Come on, see what I'm saying? So, it was, so when I heard that, it wasn't about you lost momentum. There was a, a, a delay. Yeah, heard it. Listen, but, but still in your spirit, see, that's the difference. In your spirit, you wanted to finish and accomplish. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so th even though there was a delay, you were still determined to keep moving. Right? That's the issue. See, Tasha, we, we can see that in people. You have the desire, but you don't keep doing something. You don't keep tapped in. Keep tap in. Even though there was a delay, doesn't mean I got to stop. You hold the dream and the promise in your spirit. Yeah, yeah. Right? You, this might stop me now, but I'm still going to keep I'm, It might take me two more weeks to get this done, but I'm going to get it done. It's in my spirit. And stop looking at how long it's going to take. Right. Sometimes we look at that, that although there is always going to be a process, we look at that process instead of looking at the promise. And God is saying, I got you if you just keep moving. Paul said, I press towards the mark, towards the prize. Yes. yes. Of the high call. Some of y'all don't have no vision for the prize. Ooh. Come on, trustees. Can I say something? Oh, that I didn't talk. That's Dana said. Because I think sometimes we think, so I started a devotional today because, you know, momentum is something that I'm working on. And the title of today's chapter was Delay is Not Denial. Yes. And so we get to we think that because it's not happening on our time, that that is saying it's not going to happen. Right. And so then we, like, call ourselves out and we step back and it's like, oh, it's not happening. But part of keeping up that momentum is remembering that mm -hmm. delay and denial are two different things. Yes. That's a word. Yes. Can we give you all three? 